So I started fooling around looking at, uh, because Altuve is on a pace maybe to be a Hall of Famer, um, I started thinking, well, what about the guys that played contemporaneously who were in the Hall of Fame and guys that were played against them that weren't in the Hall of Fame? Um, and so there's some overlap in these guys, but I picked um, Bobby Gritch and Lou Whitaker. So those are the two guys that you and I always say, wow. how They should be guys? in the Hall of Fame, and they're not. Uh, Jeff Kent is another guy who uh, played second base who isn't in the Hall of Fame. I'm not as hell-bent on him as they are the first two. But when you look at his offensive statistics, it gets really hard to be like, okay, wait a second. If not him, then who? You're not wrong on that at all. I agree. Um, and the two guys that did get in, in Ryan Sandberg and Roberto Alomar, um, and they all played, um, let's see, it goes back as far as Gritch, who started in 1970, uh, and Kent started in 1992. So that's a, a pretty big, they weren't contemporaries, uh, those guys. No, but there was a period of time where all of the, the only guys that didn't play together were Gritch and Kent. Everybody else overlapped at least a little bit. Right, right. And and Gritch's career, as we've talked about many times, beset by injuries, has the fewest at-bats uh, and plate appearances out of all of those five players. And so his career stats, consequently, are not as high because he didn't play as many games and get as many opportunities. Uh, even though his war, which is really interesting, his uh, wins above replacement is higher than all of them except for Alomar, I think. He, he was Sandberg. definitely by war the best, one of the better fielders, the best fielder out of this group. So I think that's a big, that's a big interesting part of it. But I mean, if we if we start about comparing all of them, so if we look at total number of at bats, they're all pretty close to each other, with the exception of Gritch. So Ryan Sandberg has the least amount of at-bats at just under 8,400, and Alomar has the most at just under 9,100. So that's so you're talking really about tight, under right. like six, like, like that's about a season. Aside from Gritch's 6,890, right. right? Gritch is at 6,890. So you're talking about, about, about a season to a season and change worth of at-bats difference between all of them. And we could have talked about plate appearances, but the statistics would be the same if you right. did. Right, the statistics are about the same. You're just dealing with slightly bigger numbers. So I, mean, I think that, that, that shows that these guys, in terms of the amount that they played was pretty consistent. We're not comparing about one guy who had a much shorter career, which can distort some numbers in comparison to other. Much shorter career is much easier to have a way higher average. And I really like, you know, when they look at the ages that they played, Alomar played from 20 to uh, age 20 to age 36. Gritch from age 21 to 37, although there was a lot of injury in there, which is why he doesn't have it. Ken from age 24, a little late starter, to 40, played a little later. To, uh, 21 to 37 for Sandberg and 20 to 30. So they all played about the same total number of seasons in the 17 to 19 or so seasons. Uh, six, you know. and, and so if we just kind of go do the tail of the tape, I mean, it's kind of interesting if you look at it. Alomar was the only guy to have a career average of 300. So I think that, that that's something that's interesting in that he's the only guy that hit that kind of mark on them. So I think I think he's also the kind of guy I think he's underappreciated, even though he's a Hall of Famer. Um, and some of this stuff off the field that that happened maybe has tainted, uh, you know, his his memory a little bit, I think, for, for players, because this is like uh, I can't hate to say it, but he's an all time, you know, major league second baseman. Mm -hmm. And and I don't I don't think people think of him that way. Uh, and if you go, uh, you know, they're only like I mentioned to start the podcast. There's only 20 um, uh, second basemen all time, uh, including uh, um, Alomar in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Biggio, Carew, Eddie Collins, Bobby Durr. We talked about him last week. Johnny uh, Evers, Tinkers to Evers to Chance, Evers, Nellie Fox, Frankie Frisch, Charlie Geringer. We talked about him last week. Joe Gordon, Billy Herman, Rogers Hornsby. I don't know I thought Hornsby was a shortstop more than a second baseman. That's not correct. He was a second baseman. <laughs> um, Nap Lajway, Tony Lazari, Bill Mazeroski, Bid McPhee, that name keeps coming up, the guy who played for the Reds before the 20th century, Joe Morgan, Jackie Robinson, Ryan Sandberg, and Red Shandis. So that's it in the history of Major League Baseball to have guys in the Hall of Fame from second base. And, and so left out are not just the guys we talked about in, um, in, in Gritch and Kent and Whitaker, um, but you have guys that are coming up for election uh, like Chase Utley, mm -hmm. and so we took a little look at him, uh, and we took also a look at Altuve, who when you start stacking up his stats, and we'll do that a little bit later, all time, he's like, wait a second, he belongs in right, what, But I think the problem is when you bring in Altuve, and I think Altuve is the kind of guy that's going to break this apart, is that if you add an Altuve and you say Altuve is a Hall of Famer, what, what the hell do you do with the rest of these guys on this list? Because how is Altuve a Hall of Famer and these other guys aren't? And if we, as we go through the numbers, I mean, Kent... The, the big one of the biggest areas I think they stand out of is Kent's 377 career home runs by far, by far the most. He's got a hundred more than the, the only guy that's even closes Sandberg at 282. 
Dude's got almost 100 more than the next closest guy. He's the only guy that's even knocking on the door of 400 home runs. And he had the worst glove of all of these guys. Right, he's the only guy that's technically... Didn't, a, have, a, didn't have a gold glove. I think right. all the other guys had, had, had gold gloves. He was technically a negative defensive player. He had a negative .1 D war. The only other guy that could be considered bad is Alomar, who was only 3.3. The other guys all had above 10 for their career. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, you could really see how that affected Kent, and I think this is interesting, because Kent only had 55 career war with his negative D-war. Alomar at 67, but he only had three more D-war, so Alomar they projected out as being a much more valuable offensive, offensive player. player. Right, because he did it by stealing bases. Right. He, did, he had power. He had much more power than people thought. He had 210 home career. Home right, right. At least of this group. Right, right. So, uh, you know, he did it uh, in every facet you know, of the game, and, and Kent's big knock has always been the glove, and I think He's kind of come around a little bit, has Kent's uh, reputation in seeing, well, he wasn't as bad as we th as we call him out for a He being. wasn't as bad as we think. <laughs> right, right. He's kind of, you know, maybe average, slightly below average, but not like he was horrible, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of a thing. So, um, and, and I, you know, I'm not one that's going to trumpet him for the Hall of Fame because I would, in order of priority, I would probably take uh, Whitaker, then Gritch, and I probably would right now take Altuve over Kent in, in my mind, even though he's not eligible. Right, right. But, but the, 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 to me, I think this kind of goes into the thing that the, as we get these new guys coming into the Hall of Fame, I think you're going to run to more and more of these situations where how do we say that this guy is a slam dunk Hall of Famer when there are other guys that have exactly comparable careers to him that aren't in the Hall of Fame? Like if Jose Altuve is a first ballot Hall of Famer, how is Lou Whitaker not a Hall of Famer on some level? How is Bobby Gritch? How is not? How is Jeff Kent? Like, I don't understand how one of those guys can be in and the others can't. And we're not, I, I agree, and we're not talking about adding, you know, not adding anybody, but saying that it's not like a bunch of guys. We're talking about, okay, you, you, let's pick another guy that, you know, might, might do that, that, that statistically would be that we, we, we've got Gritch and we've got Whitaker, we've got Kent maybe. How about Robinson Cano? Oh, we don't like that guy because of, you know, steroids, steroids and that kind of stuff. But all time stats. So even if you added all these guys, so you got those three guys, you got Cano, you got Altuve, you got, we'll talk about Chase Utley, you know, and all Five, that kind of stuff. Like six. six, six more guys. Oh, that'll ruin the Hall of Fame. Right, right. <laughs> I, think, I think we were just, ba basketball is at like 1.5%. No higher. But it's even higher. It's like four percent. Right. It's like four percent, which is wild to think about it in comparison to the major leagues, which is barely above one percent. Right. Right. Like like one point one, one point two percent. So you know, of course, you could say if you added all of those guys, and I'm not advocating that right now. But if you added six guys, they would be adding thirty percent of more second baseman to the Hall of Fame. That's an outrage. You know, like come on. You know, really, I mean, is it really? And I'm not trying to put, we're not trying to put fringe guys in there, you know, to say, oh, he was a nice player and he should be considered for the Hall of Fame. I'm trying to think of a player who, like, you know, maybe had good stats but was clearly not a Hall of Famer, but maybe we should look at this guy. No, we're not doing any of that kind of stuff, you know. We're not that. saying Brandon Phillips is a Hall of Famer. Right. That's good. That's good. I like Brandon Phillips. I right. Brandon Phillips is a good baseball player. He's the guy that should be in the Hall of Very Good, not Lou Whitaker. Uh, Brendan Phillips is the type of guy that should come up with whose second baseman do you remember from the 2000s and the 2010s that were like better than you remember? That's where Brandon Phillips should come up. Good baseball player. Good baseball player. Very good baseball player. He's not a Hall of Famer. And I think even most, even Brandon Phillips himself might, I mean, he'd probably say he's a Hall of Famer. <laughs> yes, he would. But I think even Cincinnati, Cincinnati Red fans wouldn't say that he's a Hall of Famer. Right, any more. Maybe than, he's a Cincinnati Red Hall of Famer. Any more than Met fans would swear that David Wright's a Hall of Famer at third base, as much as they want to say it. Right, right. As much as you could say, you could say David Wright would have been a Hall of Famer. That's about the most I like you can say. I like that. David Wright would have been a Hall of Famer. And I, I think that one of the things that I think Major League Baseball should do is they need to get away from just doing these strict error committees. They don't meet often enough. And I think it puts a lot of pressure on these committees to get very narrative driven because you're almost always going to have one guy in each of these committees that's clearly should be in. And so the entire narrative then becomes about putting that guy in and it becomes very easy to just put that guy in so that you're not adding too many people. I think that they should have an independent group meeting to just review players that aren't in like every five years or something just to reduce some of the pressure because there are so many names that should go in and having this conversation more often, I, I think that the problem you run into is the writers are sensitive to having a ballot that doesn't put anybody in. Well, that's at the initial point, right? These right. writers have no when you get to the era committees and but stuff I think like that, even the it's era, not writers but anymore. But even the era committees are not going to want to meet 
have an entire run through and then not put anybody in. It would look bad. It would be like, what's the point of having them then? You're really going to tell me you guys reviewed everybody that wasn't in the Hall of Fame and you couldn't find one person that deserved to be in there? We all know that wouldn't be true. And, and you know, there's only 273 players in the Hall of Fame. So if you if were, we went to 300. <laughs> exactly. When we talked about that, you know, it would not be that big a deal. We'd go from 1.1% to 1.2. And and if you had your, like, let's, let's say you're a writer and you've been on there for, you know, a voting writer and you've been on there for 25 years. And in that time, there's been an, an adding of 17 Hall of Famers in those, you know, those years or 21 or something like that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> like, what's, what's wrong I think we're with that? Okay. Yeah. So, um, and, and so let's, let's take a look uh, for a second at, at Cano and how he stacks up with those guys because I think, you know, statistically, I guess I, I imagine, I hope it would be, it's only for the fact that you're mad at him for steroids that you would say, this guy's not a Hall of Famer. Because out of all this, the, the, now when you look at Jeff Kent's 377 home runs. They're not as impressive. It's, it's, well, it's, it, it's, Cano has 335, so he's not ahead by 100 or anything like right. that. And Cano was a far superior eight-time gold glove at second base, uh, second baseman, a career 300 average, um, also had almost 10,000 plate appearances, same amount of at-bats, it's the same now, now this career. Is, but you get some interesting stuff because you get weird quirks of stats so bobby grich technically has a higher ops plus for his career than robinson cano and i don't think there's anybody even the world's biggest bobby grich stands that would say bobby grich was a better offensive player than robinson cano <laughs> That's a great point, and I'm, I'm actually shocked. Now, the reason why I think that is OPS Plus is weighted, I believe, against the other second baseman of the time that you're playing against. And so what that's telling you is that Cano put up way better numbers and had way better competition. All right, well, actually, I think that, and, and Bobby Gritch's uh, on base plus didn't. slugging was 839 for, for no, that's 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 Cano. Um, that's so, his OPS. Cano's OPS is eight thirty nine. Grich's is seven ninety four. Right, right. But but like you mentioned his OPS plus is higher than Cano by one, one twenty five to one twenty four. And that's because Grich didn't have the competition. At, exactly. You know, that's what I'm saying. Basement, that, you know, that because he's only twenty. True. He's twenty points higher. Grich is twenty points higher in uh, on base at three seventy one. So he walked a lot. But he hit 266, Cano hit 300, and Cano slugged 60 points higher. So you can really see that Cano, Cano was just a complete hitter, and he was not a bad fielder by any not stretch. Not bad. The guy had eight gold gloves. Right, exactly. It's not we, bad. That's great. But people don't think of him as a good fielder. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yankee fans. Would Yankee disagree. fans do, but I think... Even, even this Met fan saw the guy play second base. You're I'd a New say, Yorker. Yeah. What I'm saying is I think non-New Yorkers don't realize how good a... a uh, a defensive player he is. And then it gets even worse when you bring in Altuve because Altuve's got a 130 OPS plus. Right, and and also has a, a couple of gold gloves to his credit, I and, think. And uh, he's, got, he's got the highest career uh, OPS outside of Jeff Kent, who's at 855. He dwarfs everybody else, by the way. He's like 20 points higher than everyone else. So I mean, it's just he's the only guy with the clearest slugging over 500. Right, and he's, you know, he's got about, he's about 20% short of the years and games because he's not played as many seasons yet he's only 34 so when he plays and the year he's having this year i think he's got a 158 you know uh right, yeah. he's got the problem with the plus. astros so uh he's having a great start to the season right, and, well and the thing for him is he's gonna pass gritch in home runs he might pass lou whitaker in home runs if he gets up to ryan sandberg levels he gets another 70 or so over the next three or four seasons which he could definitely do he'll play until he's 34 37 38 i, I think so he signed a longer deal with the right. astros because he wants to retire in astro but, but I, another one team hall of famer i imagine that mo once you get to about 37 38 your regular playing days especially as a fielder they really do drop unless somehow your game hasn't fallen off and it's hard he looks like dh then right right he's probably going to be a dh and he could still be a very good DA. Guy's five foot six, and he's got three hundred. He, he might hit three hundred career. career. He'll have three hundred career. I don't home think he'll runs. have three hundred career home runs. He'd have to hit like an eighty-five in the over the course of the next. Yeah. I mean, I guess there's an eighty-five over the next five seasons. Yeah, he could 15, 16 a year, six seventeen a year. He Should could, especially if he has a couple big seasons up front. I just worry about that him. ballpark's conducive to hitting but, the ball right. out. But if he he's got to be at sixty, probably he's got to yeah. have hit sixty of them in the next three seasons because he can't be needing to hit like thirty. 40 home runs at 37, 38. But I, I assume, like me, you're like, well, both Cano and Altuve should get in. Right, and if both Cano and Altuve should be in, Gritch and Whitaker should be in. Because we haven't talked about that much about Lou Whitaker during this, but that's because we've talked about him so much otherwise. But he stacks up just as favorably as the rest of these guys. Though he does have the lowest career OPS. 
Yeah, but also played in that same, just maybe post Gritch era by just you know five or six years, and he was oh, a, no, so that Sandberg as such a fine as. offensive player compared to the other second baseman playing at that time. Right, and but it's interesting that he doesn't have the OPS given that how much better he was. He was hitting 276. He slugged 426. He only had an OPS of 2, 789. So he had one of the he had the lowest OPS. So he was not a guy that hit that hit got a lot of extra base hits because. I mean, in comparison to everybody else, he's about the same as it looks like Utley. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He had about he's about the same as Utley. So if in your mind Chase Utley is a Hall of Famer, you kind of have to put in Lou Whitaker. Well, let's hold off on Chase Utley just a little longer uh, and talk about Whitaker because at the time he retired, his 244 home runs was among the most ever for a second baseman. Right, and it was really until these guys that came along after him that he got Cano supplanted. and Kent and and, and now Al and now Altuve um, and in and, and Utley. I don't know how many home runs that Utley had. Two fifty nine. Two fifty nine. So uh, and and he's another guy coming up for uh, election. I think on the he next did, ballot. He did, he did pretty well on this one. There's a good chance this year yes i think i think he's got a good chance of making it um and and again you look at the same thing he played from age 24 to 39 it's the same thing with another all these guys. another one team guy another one team guy though we, we don't think that should be the criteria for getting you into the hall of fame the same way good playoff performance helps being a one team guy helps right Right, right. And, it and adds to your mystique, and it means that there's way more likely that there's one writer in that room that is exceedingly loyal to you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because you were, he was there with you the whole time. Mm -hmm. I, I think you'll, you'll, you'll and, and the local writers definitely will say, I watched the guy. That's why Jimmy Rollins gets so much love from Philadelphia. That's what I'm saying. It really helps because you're going to have, the same way I think it hurts a guy like Sheffield who probably doesn't have a lot of writers going to bat for him because they don't know him the uh, same He's going to get in on a veterans committee. Oh, I'm sure he will. He I'm, should. I'm almost positive about that. But interesting about... Um, Utley, uh, and, and among those others, also only Utley had over 1,000 RBIs for his career. Only Gritch had less than 1,000 uh, RBIs, and that's, again, more and he, due and to the fact that he just didn't play quite as much. But he's still much. 140 short. Right, right. And Altuve is the other guy, and it's pretty assured, I think, that Altuve will get I, I think the other thing that hurts RBIs. Gritch is that for a guy that didn't hit a lot of home runs, didn't hit for a lot of power, he also didn't steal a lot of bases. And he no. was not a good base dealer either. He only stole 104 bases in his career, and he got caught 83 times. I think he kind of felt he had to run because, you know. He that, didn't that, do that, those other things. He didn't, although, you know, his 22 home run season at the time, I don't know of another second baseman that hit anything where near 20 home runs, which is why hey, we're right. he got such consideration part, part at of the, that time. Part of the problem is you're like, oh, he had 22 home runs in his season. You say that to people now, they're like, oh. Okay, he had a nice little season. Yeah, well, that would be like having a shortstop at that time hit 20 home runs, which we're almost, almost... Nowadays, it's like, oh, cool, you have a shortstop that can hit 20 home runs. Who are you building your... Who else are you building your team around? Because it ain't that guy. <laughs> so I, I think these guys, you know, uh, I would say the one guy that, I, that I'm not convinced is going to make the Hall of Fame out of all of those guys we talked about, who would it be? I have... I, Gretsch. You, you think he's never going to get it? I don't think Gretsch will get it. I think he's the guy least likely to get it. So you think Utley will get there before Gretsch does? Yeah. Boy, that's that's tough for me to accept. The only thing that 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 really stands out for Gritch is that he doesn't have the all-time stats because of the injuries. So unlike Billy Wagner, who's not in the Hall of Fame because he doesn't have quite enough innings pitched right. and didn't play, um, Gritch's that, Gritch's that's issue not because of injury is, is kind of is is twofold to me. Is that he he is decidedly the worst offensive player out of the bunch. He he's he's definitively I think might be the best defensive player out of but the bunch. But not by not by that much. No, not that's by that the problem. Much. He's not that much. A better defender than the other guys in this group that you can just go okay well he was a different player than all of them he was a wizard out there he really wasn't in comparison to the other other guys so him being a slightly better fielder than the other guys doesn't make up for the fact that he is definitively a worse hitter than all of the other guys uh, and when you look at the ops plus numbers for these guys, uh, I, I like I like to do that. And it's strange because he's got the best. Right, he's got the best. So I, I, I you know, that, so it makes it hard to uh, evaluate that way because they're all in that same company, is what I mean when I see that. Right, but I know? look at his batting average, his on base yep. percentage, and his slugging. He's got the worst slugging, the worst batting average, and he's tied for the best on base. And he's not that. And everybody's within twenty seven points of each other on on base. So. And, and, and Ops Plus, I mean, you know, they basically range from 116 or 114 to 125. To 125. I mean, 
there's just not the that. only time it gets bigger is if it jumps up to 16 when you add an Altuve. So in the Hall of Fame could stand to have all of them get in. I think, and, and that's clearly my bias against Utley, that I probably would have Gritch over Utley and have Utley be the guy I waiting. Think Kent's the guy that's most likely to end up waiting. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. And that's, that's unfair. statistically. It's well, unfair. It's only because how do you have the guy who has the most home runs ever by a second baseman not be in the Hall of how Fame? How do I have the guy that, <laughs> defi- like, in my mind, clearly the best hitter of the group? Did you say Kemp was the best hitter of the group? Yeah. I don't know about that. I would take I would take Alomar over him as an overall hitter. It really depends on who else is on my team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There'd be teams I would want Alomar for. There'd be teams I would want Kent for. Because I could build my team in a way to say, okay, I can live with Kent giving me a little bit less defensively because I want his increased power in the lineup. And there's lineups where I'm going to say, okay, I want Alomar's speed and defense present at the top of the lineup mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because I'm going to compensate in other places. He can for beat that. you in, in so many different right. ways. And, and Kent certainly benefited, I hate to say it, from another guy, maybe it's a giant bias or something, who has the most home runs in the history of Major League Baseball who's not in the Hall of Fame. That somebody, would be his former teammate. <laughs> yeah, but somebody had to be the protection for him. He yeah, did the job. That's what I'm saying is, is that, you know, having, ha- having him in there with Barry Bonds, Kent, uh, um, you know, benefited both of them. I think the guy that really benefited was Rich Aurelia. <laughs> well, that was one that one year. The, the, the crazy outlier se- season for Rich Aurelia. The outlier. 04? Yeah, I think like it was 04. It was either 03 or 04. 37 homers and all that. So I, I bet you Rich Aurelia looks at that once in a while. He looks at that and he's like, man, that was I would just have really that. I would, just have that I would just have that baseball <laughs> reference stat line framed in my yes, house. Yes, that was a really good. I was, I was like the best that year, you know, uh, at that position. So, um, yeah, but, you know, interestingly, because besides Altuve, if you think around Major League Baseball right now, is are there any other second basemen who are even remotely close to being on that track? Not Jeff McNeil. <laughs> <laughs> no. The theory of Al- Mookie Betts. What? 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 what, like, what, I don't what, what you would call Mookie right. Betts? The theory. Swiss of, Army knife. I, I'd say the theory of Ozzy Albies. Oh yeah, well it's a long time for that. Well, no, no, I'm just saying the theory of Ozzy Albies is that player. The actual player is on the DL. Yeah, yeah. I mean the guy. Well, he's the, back now. He's uh, playing again until he's hurt. I yeah. mean, I, I, he's is he back? He's kind of like I imagine he's kind of like um the what's the box experiment where you put the cat in the box? The Schrodinger. The Schrodinger. Yeah, yeah. He's Schrodinger's <laughs> player. Like, is he really on the DL? You don't know until you've observed him actually on the field playing. But when, but, but to the point that when you think about that, not having anybody else but Altuve, who's already played ten years in the major leagues. Albies maybe being the closest to your point, um, so that there's room for these guys to well, go in because it could be a long well, time. I think it's not you surprising you're seeing baseman. this, given that you had guys like Cano and Utley just to retire. You had the these really, and now you've got Altuve who's on the back end of his career. The same way you're about to have a a a lack of dominant starting pitching because all of these guys are on the cusp of retiring. You're about to have a lack of dominant second baseman, and the next position you're going to get that at before long, I think it's first base. There's a lot of really good first base that are starting to get up there in age, and I wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden we're like, oh, what happened to Paul Goldschmidt? What happened to all these other guys that were so good at what Freddie Freeman's retired? You know, this might be five years down the road. Where'd all these amazing yeah. first basemen go? Yeah, yeah, and, but I, I was thinking, I, I can't even pick another second baseman. Like, okay, so if, if the guy had a Andres career Jimenez. starting now... Andres Jimenez? Right, right. So if, if, he, if, he, if he plays great for the next 12 years, well, that would be anybody. But, but there's a <laughs> lot of guys... The second base is a very young position right now. Right, right. So it's it's you can't even project out so that the fact that that's the case means that these guys should be more seriously considered um, because you know we could end up having 20 years if no none, if Utley didn't get in and Cano doesn't get in and and Altuve for some reason doesn't get in um, you're not going to have a second baseman in the Hall of Fame for like you know 25 years and, and just because we had been talking about it Richard really is 2001 oh, season my mistake I, I mean he he was a career he had a career 99 OPS plus he had a casual 146 OPS plus that season he outperformed himself <laughs> he had 324 he never bat he only had 300 301 other season he had a 572 slugging and a 941 OPS right and so if you if you flipped over and you just looked at Barry Bonds season and you know, that season and Jeff Kent's season you they know, were all really good they were all really good and that you know that was a, a an unbelievable hitting team. So uh, yeah, we're going to keep talking about these guys uh, because I, I, you know, I want I want it to be on record that you know it, nobody should complain when there's a, a possible twenty year stretch when there's not a second baseman going. Man, I guess there weren't very good second basemen at that time. Right. Yeah. You're just gonna, Kent that year hit twenty two homers. He had forty nine doubles, batted two ninety eight, and had a nice one thirty one OPS. So 
He was some nice protection. But the problem was the man in the middle of that lineup didn't need any protection because that was the year Barry Bonds hit 73 homers, batted 328. <laughs> what you, I, I just, this was the last thing. What do you think his OPS plus was that year for well, the season? Got to be 1.3, 1.4. Uh, uh, 1.3. So, so understand, Aurelio was 146. What do you think Bonds was? Oh, over 200, right? 259. <laughs> <laughs> So that means that he's 150 percent, 159 percent better than anybody else, you know, <laughs> as an as an average player. That's that's just, that is the most one of the most laughable statistics in all of And that wasn't even the weird season where we had the 600 on base. Wasn't that an 04? Yeah, yeah, he, 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 had, he had 515 that year. Uh, so yeah, yeah, he, had, he got on base almost 61 percent of the time in 2000. Yeah, I think that was the year where you did a statistical regression that he would have actually been better off literally never Not, lifting the bat off of his shoulder that if season. He, if he struck out every time, he still <laughs> he would still have been a really good. Player. <laughs> so, so yeah, amazing. So, so anyway, um, if you got any other second basemen that you think we're missing here, let you know, us know. Let us know and all that. And we'll, we always we'll, love we'll, hearing from we'll, everyone. We'll talk about that. We appreciate that you guys are, are following us and listen to us, but uh, we love hear, hearing from you. So thanks. <laughs>